I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> so welcome to our March 22nd, Tiverton School Committee meeting. Uh, is there anyone signed up for open forum, Ms. Bendis? Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion so to approve the consent agenda. Second. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Mrs. Farnworth? Yes. Mrs. Pavo? Yes. Mr. Cotis? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, so next is new business uh, high school accreditation report. Dr. Sancioni. Thank you, Dr. Larkin. And, and tonight we're going to pre present to you the results of the high school accreditation report that was performed on Tiverton High School this past year. Actually, it's been in place going on, uh, started last year into this year. A lot of work being done by the high school faculty and the high school administration to get there. Um, remind you what accreditation means. Accreditation is something that uh, is allowed to be put on our transcripts. It validates the school. It's a school that meets the standards of the state in which the school resides in. It, validate, it, it sends signals to colleges that these students have received a high quality education and a high quality facility. Uh, and so certainly we take the recommendations very seriously. Uh, and you're going to hear tonight some of the things, the commendations that the school received, and I think it's important to recognize those commendations, but you're also going to hear some recommendations. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our principal, Sue Craven. Thank you. As Dr. Sanchione said, um, we take these recommendations and commendations seriously. There are some um, recommendations that are priorities. When I met with the NEAS committee, we went through our priority list. We do have plans in place. So I'm going to call on our co-chairs of our NEAS committee, Pam Dowd and Lee Cusimano, and they're going to give an overview, a presentation on what the report states, and then I'll open it up to all of you for questions. Welcome. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we begin, we just wanted to say that um, the collaborative conference uh, has occurred after around the seven-year period. We go through a 10-year cycle in order for accreditation uh, to occur. And around the seven-year mark, they come in uh, as a small committee of these five uh, folks. Uh, and they have a chair and four experts in the field. And they come in, they look at our school, and they give us a collaborative conference report. Let us know where we are at this particular point. And then over the next three years, so be in the fall of 2023, that's when they'll be coming in the same, I understand, is the same five people. And an additional maybe seven or eight more people will be here. So we'll have a larger group of people to look at the school system as well. But we have done quite a bit of work. So we have work to do, but not as much as if, if they came out on a 10-year cycle. <laughs> Great. So we'd like to start with the commendations, um, and we've broken them down. And first, we'll uh, share and report on the social emotional wellness. So first, um, some of the accommodations include the safe and positive, respectful and inclusive school culture, the high level of participation in and support for student clubs that foster inclusive environments. Some of those clubs include, include the Pair Helping Network the Gender Sexuality Alliance Network, and Unified Sports. The use of a formal social emotional assessment to assist in monitoring student well-being, and more specifically, the panorama. The commitment of the district to a comprehensive K through 12 approach to the development of the portrait of the graduate. So now I'm gonna share on the accommodations around resources, the wide range of social emotional supports available to students, the frequent collaboration and communication between and among all support services staff, general ed staff, and outside agencies to ensure the needs of all students and that they're met, the efforts of the school nurse to be a resource and support to both students and parents, the multitude of library information services and materials available to support teaching and learning, the amount of support provided to students through the guidance department, especially in the area of college planning. And then I'm gonna move on to explain some of the uh, accommodations we have for academics. Um, there was a lot of uh, celebration around the range of academic programs and opportunities made available to our students. They were completely uh, blown away by the amount of AP classes we offer, about 13 at the moment. 
we have two CTE road ride approved uh, programs and we have four more pathway programs uh, in the works. So they were quite uh, impressed about how well we try to meet as many of our students needs. The strong connection forged between students and educators, um, those basically came from our um, surveys and they've, it was a uh, uniform that uh, there was a strong relationship between all the parties. A variety of counseling and co-curricular groups supports the social emotional well-being. The commitment to student learning and growth presented by the senior projects, um, we spent some time discussing that and they were very impressed how our students went out to the community, represented themselves well, learned from mentors and reached out to people here in, here in town as well as abroad. The numerous opportunities for a variety of stakeholders to collaboratively participate in committee work that informs administrative decision making and the strong commitment to giving back to the community through service hours and numerous school projects. So since we have relatively a smaller school compared to some of the schools that they actually visit, they were surprised that we had maybe about 32 activities, clubs, sports, very inclusive environment. So there's many, many opportunities for students to have a place for them to land and we're always constantly trying to make sure they have a place to land for themselves. Um, other uh, accommodations uh, would be the commitment, thank you, to the development curriculum maps to ensure clear expectations for teaching and learning, the time, energy and leadership support dedicated to curriculum development, the authentic learning experiences provided for students, the variety of forms of uh, summative assessments for students to demonstrate their learning, and the widespread use of varied types of technology to support teaching and learning. The other areas here, uh, commendations commitment to learning, and they were quite, quite impressed of how dedicated high school faculty is to reaching out and working with students in a variety of ways. Um, what really caught their eye was we're in the, in the process right now of developing the vision of the graduate or the portrait of the graduate and you've gotten your surveys in town, they thought that was really, really unique to have a K through 12 vision in order to drive the entire district. They liked the fact that we were very honest in our self-evaluation. Some districts may be a little <laughs> fudge a few things. We were quite on target and very honest about where we have our strengths and where we have areas of growth. The use of limited common planning time to focus on school improvement goals. The variety of choice afforded to all high school students uh, selecting meaningful courses. And I know this is going to even be a bigger piece now. We just finished a wonderful program of studies. So that's quite extensive. That's even going to uh, propel us even further. Um, the authentic partnerships between the community and school as evidenced by the senior project. And finally, for accommodations, um, I'd like to talk about investments. The investment in updated security doors, cameras, security system, and emergency escape windows to enhance the safety of the school plant for students and staff. The funding and time provided to staff for professional development and learning by the school and district. The dedicated funding provided to support the one-on-one -on -one Chromebook initiative and a planned replacement cycle. The infrastructure and protocols in place to ensure effective responses in crisis situations. So on this slide here, we'd like to just point out the foundational elements and um, I'll go through each one. And for each one, we as a school rated and the visitors also rated. So for 1.1A, um, under standard one with learning culture, that is the school community provides a safe environment. We felt that we met that foundational element and the visitors agreed. For 1.2a, the school has a written document describing its core values, beliefs about learning, and the vision of the graduate. We felt that we did not yet meet that foundational element, and the visitors agreed. For 2.2a, there is a written curriculum in a consistent format for all courses and all departments across the school. Here again, we felt like we did not meet that foundational element yet, and the visitors agreed. 3.1a, that foundation speaks to the school has um, a current school improvement and growth plan. We felt that we met that foundational element, and visitors agreed. 4.1a, 
The school has intervention strategies to, to designed to support learners. We felt that we met that and the visitors agreed. And last and finally, the um, learning sources for resources for standard five. The school site and plant support the delivery of curriculum programs and services. We felt that we met that, but after the visitors um, collaborated with content visit visits, they felt we did not meet, and we can address that a little bit more further in the presentation in the recommendation section. So after uh, the folks come in and they actually tour the school, interview people, and go through the process, they come up with areas of priorities that we should start looking at. So priority area number one is to develop beliefs and learning and a vision of a graduate that includes the skills, knowledge, understanding, and dispositions necessary for future success. So they recognize that we are in the process of aligning our K through 12 portrait of a graduate. So they're aware of that and we were commended for that, but they realize we have to develop that. Um, and they also uh, commented that we have to look at some of our core values. We have the words tigers, tough, innovative, global, empathetic, reliable, and skillful, but they would like us to have spent more time uh, developing those beliefs uh, along with the li in line with the, the portrait of the graduate. The second priority area <coughs> is something that um, it says the complete development of written curriculum in a consistent format for all courses in all departments that include units of studies, for guiding essential questions, concepts, content, skills, and integrates the school's vision of the graduate. So basically, we have curriculum. We have things that are written, so we're not deficient in that. But this particular priority means that most schools in New England, they've yet to find a school in New England that they've visited that had curriculum that was written in the same format, in the same way, of a consistency. So if you go into a math department, there's written curriculum. If you go into the science department, there's written the curriculum. But they would like it to be a little more aligned and a little more lined up with the vision of the graduate. So there is written curriculum. Um, priority number three. Establish and implement consistent protocols for data review and examine student work evidence of student learning to improve curriculum, instruction, assessment practices, and programs and services. So they do realize that looking at, at, at these data things, we have to be more uh, cognizant of it in our PLC time. So we talk a little bit about that in our priority area number three. Okay. Um, and they notice that there's a little inconsistencies in there, but we're aware of that and we are working on that. Priority number four, the goal is to provide consistent time within the schedule to increase opportunities for teachers to work together in professional learning communities. So the school's master schedule allows for teachers to meet in their PLCs once in a seven day schedule, but as a district works to develop more consistent practices around reviewing data and student work evidence-based learning, it's critical to have adequate time I'll be allotted for this process. And they also recognize that they would like to have some more time for us to have vertical articulation, more communication between the middle school and the high school. And priority goal number five, is provide school buildings and facilities that support the delivery of curriculum, programs, services, and particularly those areas related to student health and safety. So they do recognize that we have a building that is in decent shape. We have four walls, we have a roof, all those things are working okay. We have spaces for them. There is auditorium and there is fields. However, they're looking at some other areas, such as the restrooms, um, and a comment was that we do not have a sidewalk uh, when you come from the uh, the main parking lot where the, the teachers park and walk in. So that was something that they were uh, concerned about. They felt that was a safety issue. And so we'd like to close our presentation this evening on the recommendations that were made. First, identify students who feel unsafe, not respected, or disconnected in order to guide appropriate interventions aimed at bolstering perceptions of safety, connectedness, and respect. Implement instructional practices such as differentiation of instructional materials and strategic grouping of students designed to meet the needs of each learner. Create and implement a process for disaggregating data that supports educators in making actionable recommendations for instructional improvements. 
Increase the amount of collaborative time for teachers to include interdisciplinary PLC time and time for vertical articulation. Implement a formal defined process to refer and identify students to the RTI team. Ensure that adequate certified licensed school, school counseling personnel are available to deliver effective services to students. Create and implement a formal process which allows parents and students to support for, and students to request counseling support. Ensure that students have access to the media center before, during the student's school day, and after school. Provide adequate time and funding to enable professional educators to complete curriculum writing and revision. Address health code violations in the food service area. And last, address facility issues prioritizing those directly related to students' health and safety, such as the restrooms, food services, and kitchen. You did. <laughs> so, uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'd be to both happy you. to answer any questions sure. you may have. All right, yeah, that, I can see that was a lot of work, and we appreciate your sort of working on this and, and coming to us. So, I'm going to open it up to the committee, uh, Mr. Dakotas. So, thank you. Um, they weren't impressed with our bathrooms. That we said. No, they weren't no. impressed with the bathrooms. No. Um, well, we're working on those. Yeah. All kidding aside, um, we have a lot more going for us that needs to be fixed, right? Absolutely. So, um, sometimes people talk about other districts and they rave mm -hmm. about things, and uh, in, at least here. And then when I talk to people in other districts, they just complain about their own school district. So, uh, I think that we do a great job. And I think we have enough people that want to take it to another level. Mm -hmm. I know that's why I'm here. So thank you guys for being the uh, communicators back and forth to us. Appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for the support. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Mrs. Pava? Yes. Um, I understand how much work goes into this, how much time you <laughs> devote on your own. And I do appreciate it. I think that we did very well. Um, it's not over, but we're not over. Look at look what's mm -hmm. happening in this building right now. Our, you know, renovations that are coming down the road, and it's going to get better. And I'm very proud to be here, and very very proud of this school. Thank you so much for your time. I think if the team was here just a month later, <coughs> we'd have a different report. <laughs> so. Okay, Mrs. Farnworth. I will echo everyone else's sentiments and give you my heartfelt thanks for not only working with the team but coming to us tonight and making this presentation. I know not everyone enjoys doing such things, so I, I do thank you. Um, and, and, you know, in reading through all of these com uh, commendations, it is a, a great reminder that there is a lot of good happening here at Tiverton High School, and it's definitely it's it's encouraging, right? And we know we've known this all along. This is a lot of this is just not news to us, right? The mm -hmm. variety of counseling co-curricular groups we we all know this. We we commend all of the administrators, all of the faculty, for making making sure that this happens for the benefit of the kids. Um, with regard to the recommendations. I, I just have a few questions. Um, so, so first of all, I, I know you're reporting to us tonight. Um, you know, the first thing that would come to mind is how are you going to go about addressing some of these recommendations? Ha, has the, have those plans been put together yet, and will we be hearing more about this? If you want to take it, or I'll uh, defer. I, oh. I could start with a few. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to thank uh, the entire high school because they worked extremely hard with us. Mm -hmm. Our uh, steering, committee. steering committee, which would be Ms. Cabral, Sarah Cabral, Sarah Gray, Celeste Urban, Cheryl Gagnon. Um, we also want to thank uh, okay. Ms. Craven, administrators who actually helped us a lot and supported us. Now, Mrs. Craven has only been here, not in the district, she's been here for many years in the district, but she's only been on the job since July 1st. 
and anything and everything that we sat down in this report and we knew what we were going into and she knew we had an honest report, she already was on this. So for example, if you're talking about the part of data analysis, Ms. Craven already made sure that all the leadership team, as all the department heads, read about the leaders, uh, read about the data. We looked at all the data. We looked at the SAT, the PSAT, you name it. We looked at it. The students looked at it. Um, there's been presentations and conversations about it. It's been happening in our PLCs. If you look at any of the things that are here as a recommendation, uh, something about differentiated learning, we're in the middle of one of the things they said that they were highly impressed is that they've never seen a well-oiled a professional development district is this. So when we have our Green Book training that we're in the middle of, our next actual presentation, um, I think they're coming in May, one of our things we'll be addressing is differentiated learning. So anything that's been here is already happening. Soon as we knew we wrote the report, soon as we finished it, the very next day we made it folders and started a whole new thing and we began hitting the ground running. Um, so every, just about everything on here has, that is in control of our in RTI tracking, anything and anything else I want to add? <laughs> Got me silent for a while, <laughs> um, but anything that's been addressed, uh, everything here has been starting to be addressed immediately. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, one of the comments was ensure that adequate certified, licensed school counseling personnel are available to deliver effective services. Is this, um, are they speaking specifically to guidance counselors or to social workers, psychologists, et cetera? I think all. all. Yeah, and that, that we kind of all fell in the same category. I act as a school social worker, a school psychologist, guidance counselors, and um, the student assistance counselor. Okay. And Diane, if I may, yes. um, that's the reason why I put in um, the budget for uh, that additional point five guidance counselor, because they felt as though the caseload for our counselors was very high. Mm -hmm. And I also requested um, a point five school psychologist, because we share our school psychologist with Ranger. So we're trying to address that, that. That's the point that they made to us when they made that recommendation. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then th lastly, uh, this, and this speaks to something that we can, as a body, um, impact pretty quickly. Um, well, first of all, I will ask about the violations in the food services area. I, I did read through the detailed report, and there was mention there beyond the, the dishwasher that is in, I don't know if it's been replaced yet or if it's in process. Um, there, there was mention of issues with the floors and perhaps the need to remove unused equipment. Um, is that something, Dr. Sanchione, that you're working toward uh, in, in the very near future? I know there, there are dollars associated, especially with the floor issues. I can, I can speak to that. Um, sure. the, um, I apologize, Mr. That's Craven, okay. The <laughs> uh, kitchen equipment that was not being used anymore has already been removed. Okay, it was so removed the day after this report was was written and um, the kitchen floor in the cooler um, they can't do until the summer because we have to obviously take it everything out of the freezer in order to re do that repair so that's in the works um, underneath the dishwasher there are some tiles that need to be repaired and mr. Mendes is working on getting a repairman to do that work very quickly um, the additional issues that they had were um, focused on the sinks not being in work in order um, and we are currently fixing that issue as well okay, great. i would add to Ms. Fonswood that the equipment that needs to be replaced and some of the things Ms. craven just referred to is also in our five-year capital plan okay great great um, and then lastly uh, on the sidewalk I, I i know it's a little silly but i actually agree wholeheartedly I've never liked the fact that it's just a dirt path over there. It is dangerous, and I would actually love to see some kind of a barrier between that sidewalk and the road itself so that school buses are not coming so close to um, people who are walking by there. So that's, you know, as far as the sidewalk, I can't imagine that would be extensive money, and perhaps maybe we can act on that quickly. Um, you know, even I would support taking it out of our fund balance just to get it done. I also was project. considering the possibility of, um, and I ran it by the student body to do a, a brick fundraiser for a, a pathway there as, a, as an option if we didn't have the funding. 
um, because I know our students are constantly looking for innovative ways to raise money. So we're, we're definitely thinking about that, but I, I agree with you that it's something that needs to be addressed because we take it for granted that we come in from the visit a lot, but then the staff parking there, there, you know, there isn't anywhere for them to walk when they're crossing over. And one of the team members happened to park in the, the teacher staff parking lot and um, got the full and, yeah, experience. Because huh? I don't know if I ever really <laughs> you know, share that experience. And um, so that was interesting. Okay, great. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't think I have too much to add to what everyone else has said, but again, thank you so much for all the work. I guess I'm gratified as well that it seems like everything that they hit on we already knew about and mm -hmm. actually had a plan yeah. for so there weren't many surprises no no, no, no actually no. they were really excited that we were as honest as we were I think that made, yeah. it, made it very nice and they come back in a few years and and it's just nice to see that everybody who came in um, the commentary was about they were very impressed about our students how lovely mm -hmm. they are yeah. they thought our students were the nicest one of the nicer buildings they've been in which is mm -hmm. a testament to all the parents in the bill in the in the town mm -hmm. Um, they were impressed about how hard the teachers work, how well they're supported by our administration, and uh, it, it, it almost was like uh, they, were, they were very excited to be here, and those five people are very excited to come back. So uh, we do have a nice school, and I hope a lot of people realize how great it is to be working here in Tiverton. It is an awesome district, and this is nothing new that we have in this piece of paper. We knew it all along. We just had to write it to somebody to see it. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the public or administrators or those present? No. Okay. So. No, I do like to thank these ladies. They did do an enormous amount of work. Yeah. Um, as as co chairs for this committee, it's it's a the process is um, very strenuous, and I think they they should be commended for the things that they've done. Thank, thank you. you. It's our pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> we'll know who to ask next. All right. So uh, next is the uh, 2022 Rhode Island Student Survey. Uh, Ms. Zellwell. Thank you very much. Um, this is a survey that is done every two years. Um, it is create, was created by the Department of Behavioral Health, Hospitals and Developmental Disabilities with um, input and approval by the Department of Health and by RIDE. Um, I am grateful to Tiverton always because I have had to go to every other school high, uh, school committee in Newport County and uh, this is my fifth and final and the other schools always um, all, they all approved it this year as well but it's always nice to come um, back to Tiverton because um, you've always supported it and have been just great supporters of the coalition work in general um, as a reminder, this survey is given to all of the students from grade seven through grade 12. It is confidential, anonymous, and voluntary. So confidential in terms of um, nobody's gonna ask to see anybody's questions or answers. Um, the, the students can do it in the privacy of a, it's computerized, so they do it um, using whatever device they're allowed to use in the classroom um, setting. It takes about 45 minutes. Uh, we ask for, well, we ask for a class period of about 45 minutes. Generally, the kids are done in 20 to 25 minutes. It doesn't take them that long. Um, you may have um, a copy of the survey in your backup. I'm not sure if you do. Yes. It looks very long, and it looks, if you read through it, it looks pretty tedious. Um, what I wanna bring to your attention is when the students do it online, um, depending on how they answer particular questions, it creates a skip pattern. So they don't have to read and respond to every question. So for example, if there's a question about tobacco and they say they've never used tobacco, they're not gonna get any more tobacco questions. It's gonna skip them forward to something else. Um, that has been a question and a concern for all of the other school committees, so I'll preempt that um, for you. Um, it is voluntary um, for the students and also for their parents. We request that um, all of the parents are notified in advance and given an option to opt their student out. So they use a passive permission. Um, so if a parent is fine with their um, student participating, they don't have to do anything. 
if a parent says, no, I don't want my student to participate, they just have to fill out the um, passive permission slip and send that back saying, I'd like my um, student excused from this activity. Um, it is voluntary also for the students if they start to take it and they say, no, this is not for me, they're allowed to stop and there's, you know, the, the um, supervisors, the proctors or the teachers or whoever is administering the survey to the classes are, you know, just to respect the wishes of the child if they, if they choose not to continue, that's perfectly fine. Um, most years we do get a number of surveys, it's, it's analyzed by um, a group at University of Rhode Island and they do get a number of surveys in every, from every school that are started and not completed and those are just scrubbed from the data. Um, and I think, well, let me see. I think that's it. That's, that's all I think I have to tell you unless you have questions. So I think we need a motion to approve this. Is that right? Yes. So I'll make a motion to approve our students taking the 2021, 2022 Rhode Island Student Survey. I'll second it. Okay, so I'll ask for any questions or discussion. Uh, Ms. Farnworth? So, good evening, Rebecca. Nice to see you nice in to person see you as well. after all this time. Mm -hmm. um, you, you took the air out of my balloon because oh. I was going to ask you why 79 questions. <laughs> But thank you for explaining that it is uh, on the computer and that there would be uh, a skipping happened, happening depending on how students answered. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you also for clarifying that parents may opt out should, should that be the case and, and that students could opt out Absolutely. as well. That, that's good. Um, my, my only, and you did also mention that all of the other districts you've already approached have approved it. So that's question number two. Um, the last one, though, I, I didn't, and I don't know if I've ever asked you this one before, because this isn't the first time I've seen this. Um, is our staff able to see any aggregated results to show, to use, to help our students? Not to um, identify them. But. Yes, and that's a great question. It's a very important question, because the last iteration of this was in 2020, mm -hmm. and Tiverton had completed both in the middle school and the high school um, right before, you know, all heck broke loose in March. So we have good data from 2020 for Tiverton and for most of the other Newport County schools. And I would say for the most of Rhode Island's schools. But what happened when the schools closed down, they stopped the survey for 2020, and then they picked it back up in fall of 2020, which was whole different time. Yeah, not a good, not, not best practice in terms of data collection to start with. And the other thing that happened was as a result of waiting for those other schools to pick it up and finish, they never got the data out, the, um, the, the analyzed results out until, um, I want to say maybe in the summer of last year. So, you know, our, my, uh, I will take responsibility, we could have come back to you in the fall with some information. But at that point, it seemed like it was so long ago and almost um, there was such a disconnect from, this, from that survey data. Long-winded answer, but what I'm saying is when we get this data back, pending any kind of craziness that happens, we could come back with a nice report to be able to share with the school committee and administrators, um, but it could also be very beneficial um, for, for folks, teachers, to talk to the students about, you know, kind of giving them an opportunity to, um, it's always interesting to see what data comes back and what the opinions are of students because sometimes you hear students say, oh, everybody does this or everybody does that. And the, the truth of the matter is when it comes to some of these harmful behaviors that, you know, whether it's vaping or alcohol use, it's not the majority. It's a small, a small subset of students. But it's always an interesting conversation to have with kids. And even drilling down to why does it feel like or why do you think everybody's doing it? Well, because they hear so much about it. They hear so much about the risk behaviors. But when, it, when you can come back to the fact that it's a small population of kids doing what seems like everyone's doing, it makes for a really interesting conversation. 
um, and that would be a great, um, I think that would be a great peer helping network piece too to help other students to understand what that data is really saying. I, I agree and I appreciate you making those mm -hmm. offers. <clears throat> so one, one final thing that I would off, also offer which I think is going to be interesting to um, school committees and administrators and, um, and folks that are really invested in um, so, you know, the sort of social aspects of school. The only questions that were added this year um, had to do with pan like pandemic and um, students' feelings of isolation or anything like that. So I think it's going to be, it, there'll be a sort of a new baseline that we'll have on that because we know that mental health issues have been exacerbated by, um, by COVID for a lot of reasons. Um, so this will give us an opportunity to sort of see that where, where our kiddos are right now versus you know two years from now when they do their 2024 survey, there'll be a comparison, make sure that we are actually really meeting their needs. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. This is paper. I have, I have nothing. Okay, Mr. Dakotas. Hi, Rebecca. Hi there. Can you? Is there something where you can allow us to put tracking devices on our children so we can watch them? Wouldn't that be nice? I didn't see that in the survey. <laughs> I didn't see that in the survey. Would you allow your parents to put a secret tracking device so we know what you are, what you're doing all the time? <laughs> I but, know. Wouldn't it be great if we could just ask whatever we wanted to really know? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but uh, I did get to look at it, and I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? Just the tracking device? Okay. Device? All right. Um, I don't have any specific questions, but thank you, Rebecca. Uh, any questions from the audience or from the public? Okay, I'm gonna ask I for would a just vote. like to make sure that everyone knows Polly Allen is still the Tiverton Prevention Coalition coordinator. Somehow I always get the glory of coming up to the microphone, but she's really the one in charge. She's also still the yep. she does little delegate. Compton chairman of the school committee, so yeah. chairwoman <laughs> of the school committee. So. Uh, I'm going to ask for a vote. Mr. Dakotas? Yes. Mrs. Paper? Yes. Mrs. Farnworth? Yes. And I vote yes. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank You're you. Thank you. Okay, next is the second reading of policy number 739, the school committee agendas. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the policy as written. I'll make the motion to approve the new policy as written. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I'll open it up to any further discussion. Uh, Mrs. Pavo? Yes. No, that wasn't a vote. <laughs> discussion. Oh, discussion. No, I have no. <laughs> Mr. Dakota? Sorry. It's all right. I'd be happy um, to <laughs> Mr. Dakota? No, yeah, I, I think I'm okay. Okay. I, I was debating, but I. I Solve my own problem. I'm good. Thank you. That's a virtue. Ms. Farnworth? Uh, I, I do want to recognize, because um, I did have the opportunity to speak with a couple of community members since we put this out on first read, um, and, and there were a couple of suggestions made, and a lot of it actually <coughs> has to do with perhaps the uh, ability to include more from other existing policies. So we, we, it would be a win-win, if you will, if we were able to look at um, improving this one just a little bit by including more from other policies. So that'll be a discussion that I, I would like to have at, at our next policy subcommittee meeting. Um, and other than that, if no one has any questions, uh, you know, I had made no changes. So should we withdraw our motion? She's gonna no. I think else. the Mrs. Farnworth's no. My recommendation would comments be that notwithstanding. we approve it. Yeah. No. My recommendation is to approve it tonight, okay. and then um, what we can do is go back and make continued improvements. But they would not be uh, substantive. They they would literally be just small things. Okay. Well, I can't wait to hear what you have to say next. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to ask for a vote. Uh, Mrs. Farnworth? Yes. 
Mrs. Pava? Yes. Mr. Dakotas? Yes. And I vote yes. So next is uh, item 8D, discussion possible vote to delete policies number 740, number 741, and number 742. I'll ask for a motion to delete those policies. I'll, I'll make the motion one. to delete policies 740, 741, Second. 742. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, basically, this is just deleting the policies that we, th because they are now redundant based on our adoption of policy number 739 and its revised form. That's absolutely correct. Thank you. You can say that again if you'd like. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Dakotas? No. Mrs. Pavo? No. Mrs. Farnworth? No dis further discussion. Okay, I'll ask for a vote. Mrs. Farnworth? Yes. Mr. Dakotas? Yes. Mrs. Pavo? Yes. Okay. Item Dr. number. Larkin, did you vote? I didn't vote. Would you like to vote? You have voting rights. I'll vote. Yes. Okay. I do. Actually, I have full rights. <coughs> I was told at a recent meeting about Robert's rules. Um, I'm just as powerful as the rest of you. So next is item 9A, FY22, budget to actual. Ms. Roderick. Thank you, Dr. Larkin. Uh, so in your packet, I provided uh, our monthly uh, budget to actual through the end of February. Um, it's important to note that um, we still have a couple of things um, in general on some of these light items that are um, related to ESSER 3. The application has been submitted, but we're still still waiting on RIDE to approve it. Um, so there will be some items like, for example, um, virtual classroom, uh, which is way over budget, but um, most of that actually relates to the uh, Rhode Island Connections Academy, which is the distance learning for the current year, which will be moved over. Um, we also have some capital items on here uh, down in the 57,000 uh, series of object codes that um, we have to report here, so it looks like those are over budget. However, we've been allocated capital money uh, for that. Um, what item number is the virtual? Virtual classroom? It's 53221. That was fast. <clears throat> I just happen to have my eyes on it. Page two. All right. Sorry, go ahead, Amy. Um, let's see. So I d also wanted to point out that um, on um, several of the technology um, object codes, it looks like some of them are over, um, which they are. That's just where we put them versus where they were budgeted. Um, and we didn't want to move things around. But I, ha I do keep track of the technology budget in total. And we are still under budget in total from all the different object codes. So. Uh, I didn't want anyone to be alarmed there. Um, we do have under other services, um, those uh, are the fees for RGB thus far through the end of February. Um, um, as uh, I had mentioned at previous meetings, we are going to have an overage in statewide transportation, although there have been some beneficial changes to that. Um, we're still going to be over, but hopefully by significantly less. Uh, due to changes in student usage uh, for that. So um, hopefully that won't hit us quite so hard. And we are, um, I've reached out to several companies, both local and out of state, to assist us in the coming year. But so far, no bites. But um, literally the running joke is that when I'm driving up and down 195 and I see all these transportation companies, I take mental note of the name <laughs> so that I can go out there and um, see if we can't get some assistance that way. So. Um, and I am working with uh, the region and Mrs. Krager, Ms. Krager, excuse me, um, to, to find the optimal solution for what we need for next year so that we don't have to depend on statewide. Um, other than that, um, I, there's nothing in my mind that's out of order or um, that I'm particularly concerned about other than, again, the things that we've spoken about before, um, you know, fuel oil, uh, natural gas, those sorts of things. Um, <coughs> we do have the uh, fuel oil contract, which is in our ben to our benefit. Um, but um, you know, like um, natural gas and so forth, we don't have any control over that. So I'm keeping an eye on those very closely. Um, and so, other than that, I will leave it 
open for questions if you'd like. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Paver? Um, I do have a question. The transportation account, with the price of fuel increasing, I wasn't sure if in the contract. There is a fuel adjustment clause. <coughs> okay. Yes. And the unemployment line, um, is that 120000 Is that a normal number? You know, that sounds, that looks like a lot of claims to me. Okay, so um, that's the same number we've had yep. in my tenure here, both for 2021 okay. and 22. Um, and last year and the year before when we had those significant cuts in staff, right. we so actually utilized all of it. All of it. Knock on wood, uh, this year uh, we haven't had uh, as many claims, mm -hmm. uh, and so that hopefully will help us offset some that's of the fair. overages that we have. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say counting on, but that's one of the things Hoping. in the back of my mind uh, to help us offset some of the overages that we okay. have. Thank you. That's all I have. <clears throat> Mr. Dakotas? The only one that um, I wanted to ask about is bus monitors. Yes. Can you tell me about that one? I don't know why that catches my eye, but it does. So bus monitors, um, we also have some budget savings there as well. So when we initially um, put out the contract to bid, um, they came back uh, with X number of buses times X number of monitors, and they at the time had estimated a four-hour minimum per monitor per route. That's what I had budgeted at they are actually billing us on an actual basis, which can be anywhere from two hours to like three and a half hours, you know, just depending on the particular monitor. So we are saving uh, a significant amount of money there, which is what I'm uh, using to balance the overage in the statewide transportation. Oh, right. Someone's actually doing something nice for us. Great. Well, I, well, I apologize, Mike. But I'm done. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, is there any chance they're going to realize this and come back and backpedal? I'm, I'm sure <coughs> there is that possibility, but I have not brought it to their attention. Okay. Um, and the same thing occurred last year. We had uh, significant savings because they did the same thing. When I had created the budget for 22, that was not apparent at the time, so I had put it in there. And then I also put it in, again, the same next year, for 23 in the event that they do um, it is in the contract so it is in the contract it is yeah. in the um, actually on the bid form uh, but okay but if they're not paying the monitor can they charge us I think it was there was just the, it was the hour the number of hours it was the number of hours that w right. that they had estimated on the bid form I would have to go back um, and double check the exact language, but I do know that there is um, some verbiage about, um, you know, that any noticeable errors can be corrected on both sides as well. Um, but when, even when I was speaking with the contract manager about this year's pricing to make sure their calculation and our calculation for 22, um, the, the inflation rate and so on and so forth, they were all on board with the correct rates and at that point in time i was speaking with their finance manager and there was no mention of four hour minimums okay again not to say that they can't come back and and do that but okay anything else today uh just a couple yep go ahead and, and amy i apologize if you've already addressed this in, in your introduction um, other services, 53406, $275,000. That's the RGB invoices? That's the RGB invoices, mm -hmm. okay. And right under it, police and fire details, is that, a, is that the SRO? It is. Uh, why would there not have been a line item in, in that? When, uh, if my recollection serves me, when we initially did the budget, well, I don't remember how far back now, but um, we, the SRO was one of the items that was cut, uh, was one of the positions that was cut. And so there was no budget for that. However, then there was subsequent conversation and at we folks who were advocating to bring the SRO back, which we did, I did not make any budget adjustment for that. <clears throat> okay, for some reason I thought that was in the previous fiscal year that we had already made that. Oh, no, okay. I think it was this one. Um, and then just out of curiosity, overtime. Mm -hmm. 
more than double what your an annual estimate was? Well, we've been cutting overtime um, significantly um, in my time here. So, um, but there are, um, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of maintenance to be done. Um, I know that there's also, um, uh, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, so, um, there, there are just some needs that can't, we've had some staff that have been out, so other, I'm sorry? Yeah, we've had some staff that um, have been out on medical leave. So instead of hiring uh, someone else, we've given other folks overtime for that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I don't have anything myself. So thanks. You're Amy. welcome. Um, okay. Up to my agenda. I think we are up to the FY23 budget. Dr. St. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to bring up a couple slides. This is in conjunction to, as you know, Thursday evening we're in front of the Budget Committee for the first time. And you've seen this presentation several times. I just want to highlight a couple things that we're going to try to accomplish on Thursday evening. Uh, Julie, if you can move forward to the slide that's titled FY23 Budget Executive Summary. Okay, so this is the budget we're talking about for next year, and I think there's two key points that we need to make Thursday night. One is the school committee's voted a 4% increase, which is the maximum that you could do so, uh, and we we'll certainly would be very appreciative of that if the budget committee considers that, but I think it's important to understand what we're showing at the bottom there is that a 4% increase is a $33.5 million budget, yet what we need for level service is 35 million and again I'll remind you that a level service budget is just taking what we currently have this year and moving it ahead of till next year it's not reinstating any of the 27 positions that we've cut it's not adding any new curriculum it's not adding anything to any category it's just moving ahead one year and I think that's critical for us to try to achieve if you move forward Julie and again this is just showing here that if in fact we need a 35 million to maintain what we currently have if a four percent budget gives us the 33.5 we're looking at state aid again it's still not defined but we're using the most accurate figure right that we have right now it is about an 89 million dollar 89 thousand dollar increase we're left with a deficit of 1.4 million which is going to put the school committee in a position to, to decide how do you want to address that now you're going to have some funds that you'll have available to you you're going to have some fund balance that we're predicting might have about 800,000 by the end of the year you have ESSER 3 that you've already looked at um, we've already put positions in there to prevent us from cutting them again next year Again, you all know that that just moves a structural deficit a year ahead. Um, but pretty soon after these two budget committees that come back to back on the next two Thursdays, we're going to need to make some decisions how to uh, overcome that $1.4 million deficit, which is whether you're going to want to use one-time funds or whether you want us to come back with a plan to reduce our budget uh, by that amount. And again, if you're talking about reducing it, I'm going to remind you that we have stripped every expense account that we have so there's no room to go there. It goes directly to personnel, uh, and that could be significant for the Tibet and public schools. If you can move ahead one slide, Judy. Julie. And again, that just kind of um, reiterates it here. Uh, I've thrown out a couple ideas. I, I don't want you to think about this this evening, but just that you know, 1.4 requires us to think about things regarding positions that we desperately need that would be the first things that we'd have to put on um, for consideration of cutting. So um, if you can just back it up to two slides to the executive summary, I'll leave it there with you. Again, I, I think our approach Thursday evening is to be two-pronged, to be very uh, grateful and, and hopeful of a 4% increase, but try to make a strong impression that a $35 million budget is truly what the school committee um, needs what the school department needs what our students need uh, I've made this point repetitively the last several years that you know we carry this one point something million dollar budget year after year after year and it's just one time if it ever could be filled if you could eliminate that structural deficit then the school department really could move forward with a one two percent increase on an annual basis but as long as that's there and it's been there since my tenure here um, you know we're always faced with decisions like this again we've cut 27 positions in the last two years not a lot of other places to turn if we have to do that again so Peter 
I guess I'll want to take the first shot at this, and I'm going to ask a question, which I think is, I think I understand the answer, and I know the answer, but I want to ask it in a way that I think the budget committee will ask it, or that a, you know, sort of a average citizen or voter would ask. So, if you have a $33 million budget, and you get 4% over that, and you get another $89,000 from the state, why is there a $1.4 million deficit? to maintain the same level of funds. So what? So things had to have gone up. So what went up? Well, things went up, but you have to remember, you, again, use one-time money in FY22 or in right now. You, you're carrying this deficit year after year after year. You so use so when, when, explain that to me as the sort of uncultured, untutored. <laughs> I think you know person. the answer is you already said you're playing coy with us right now. Uh, but last year when you balanced the budget and we cut positions last year, you still used fund balance in ESSER 2. We put a whole bunch of positions in ESSER 2 and we used some fund balance money to make us whole even though we still cut some positions. Actually, Julie, if you go back a slide, I I've captured it here in FY22. Go back one more slide. So this was FY22. This is the budget we're in right now. And you can see that we used or you made the decision to put positions into ESSER two um, to $750,000, one-time money, right? And so if you move forward, a slide, Julie, even though you use one-time money, we still cut those positions. So we cut last year. You used one-time money. Now we're coming back. We'd like to have those positions back. They're not in the budget, but you still have that basically 800000 that you need to already fill in for this coming year, and now you have your increases. You you know you negotiated a contract. You have contracts coming forward. You have increases in transportation, special education, energy, so, simple so things like that. I think the answer we have to be able to give them is that there were significant increases in transportation. There were significant increases in energy. I believe there were significant in increases in healthcare. Am I incorrect? About slight, that? but so it slight always ones. goes up. And special education okay. went up pretty significant. And I think it also goes back to the FY21 budget, which was level funded when we had contractual obligations to NEA, you know, appropriate contractual obligations to our teachers, to our uh, other staff uh, that were contracts assigned before COVID, but COVID was level funding. Yeah. COVID it was level funding on the state and COVID was level funding from the town. So we had a structural deficit, and it would be, be probably useful to actually calculate what that was mm -hmm. uh, based on, and that's when we cut 22 positions. Yep. So. And again, that year you plugged it with um, fund balance and Medicaid money. Right. So you, you've been using every dollar that's available to you to preserve the activity in public schools, preserve positions, and you've still been face cuts. And, you know, that gap continues to be there until it's finally eradicated. So, so I think it will be useful for the budget committee to actually see how that structural deficit of 1.4 million breaks down. So what were positions that we funded out of ESSER that will now get cut if we don't, if we're not able to come up with that money? What were the increases in transportation? What were the increases in special ed? What were the increases in energy? And I, I think still the impact of that level funding from FY21, where we had to, and, and sort of increases that are assigned or associated with step and lane changes, and sort of how that kind of continues to echo through each fiscal year. And then eventually, we got to make up that, you know, 2% that they originally were, that we were voted that we never got, but we still had to run, we still had to open the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else closed down, but the schools never actually closed down in a realistic sense of, you know, unfortunately, people who worked in restaurants and, and other places lost their jobs. They, you know, those places no longer had a payroll. We kept our schools open and we still had a payroll. So we had no, oblig you know, we had no uh, savings from COVID and we never, and we actually, I would continue to bring up the, the deficit that was created by the increased, uh, you know, the modifications we had to make to ensure dis uh, social distancing and extra cleaning and all that other stuff, we, were, we weren't even whole from that from correct. ESSER 1. Mm -hmm. correct. I think we were $300,000 or something like that correct. in the whole. You are correct. So, so I think those points have to be made to the budget committee for them to understand exactly why we are where we are. 
happy to do that. I'll open it up to the rest of the committee after my rant. Uh, Mike, Mr. Dakotas? No, we just say good luck with the budget committee. Mrs. Pavo? Nothing. Want to wish him good luck? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Mrs. Palmer? The only uh, clarifying note that I would make is that on the budget committee's agenda, um, <clears throat> It does indicate that their follow-up meeting will be this coming Saturday at huh. 9 a.m. where they plan to vote on the school appropriation. Not Before Thursday. a second meeting? That will be it, according to what I read on the budget committee agenda. Didn't they give us, they give us two dates, right? They gave us this so coming Thursday and the 24th clarified. and the 31st. Yeah, let's clarify that. Thank you. What's, Dan, do you remember what's the date is if we submit our own budget? We had it last, last time. Yeah, we, have to, all right, we have to look at that. It's April. <laughs> Within After the April 12th? 15th. Okay. I'm pretty sure. All right, because we meet on the 12th next. Well, we, can always, we can always call another meeting. We have to. All right. Uh, so one point we also have to. So where is that meeting? I believe at Town Hall. Town Hall. Yeah. Who from the committee is attending? Because we're not posted, but. You are posted. We are posted. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> is anybody else in the school committee coming? I'll go. You going? 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 No, thank you. Okay. Great. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Deb's not going. All right. I think that brings us to the end of our agenda. Uh, unless there's anything else on the FY23 budget. I'm gonna go to future meetings. We are meeting 24th and the 31st with the budget committee. We have a strategic plan update for our April 12th meeting. That's also the next meeting of the building committee. And then we have our April 26th meeting. Any other announcements, discussion of meetings, agendas? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Any opposed? Take that as unanimous. Good night. <laughs>